Hey, everybody, this is Jenny White with the Business Growth Podcast. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking with Sean uh, Marasa, and he is the CEO and chairman of the International DSM Group, which is a pretty cool global uh, company that's uh, working in the commodity space. And he's going to be sharing with us some stories today. So, Sean, welcome to the, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Hello. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we were just talking. I'm so impressed with the team that you have with a small team of just five folks. You're able to actually deal with uh, work all across the world. Um, you're working in China and Europe and Greece and Turkey. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, story behind DSM and um, the type of work and service that you folks provide to the entire world? Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we uh, started the company in August 1997 as an LLC and we incorporated in 2007, August of 2007. And since then, we have been able to um, manage uh, with other companies, other entities to sign a joint venture with them and work in different parts of the world in petroleum and uh, crude oil and petrochemical product, uh, uh, which we are basically doing the physical trading of the product. And our next goal, the future goal is in a few years to actually build a small refinery at plants to produce mineral uh, uh, spirit. And uh, in, in Europe, they call it white spirit. And those are, is a, is a derivative from the pet uh, petroleum. It's like a petrochemical product that it used in different variety of the industry. And uh, another one will be, that would be done most likely in Houston, Texas. And the other one will be done in Calgary, Canada, which is, uh, it would be a production of urea. Urea is basically the name of the fertilizer. And uh, fertilizer are used, 90% of farmers, they use fertilizers or even more. And uh, it's a, it's a it's going to be a huge production, and it's going to take a few years to finish the construction. Right now, we're in the middle of the studies and business plan, and how to manage to um, do the uh, um, networking and engineering and all that at the moment. But as I told you, right now we're at the uh, point of doing the trades and physical trading, and. Uh, what we do is basically purchase from one entity and sell it to a buyer and they, we call it either, either reseller or a distributor or a exit buyer. Exit buyer or an end, buyer, end burner is the person who actually uses the fuel. For instance, crude oil is only used by the refineries. No one else is buying it unless they're a reseller or a distributor. And uh, same as the jet fuel or diesel or uh, any other products, they they it, you you sell the jet fuels either to the airlines, which is extremely difficult. You have to be a vendor with them, or you sell it to the resellers who have contracts with them. And uh, that's about it. That's what we do at the moment. What is the mineral spirit? The whites. What is that used for? What's the use mineral case for that? spirit? If you look at your furniture, the uh, the the uh, what they use on top of it to make it um, shiny, and even in the clothing, if you have a logo on the t-shirt or something, that would not stick on the cotton if you don't, they don't use mineral spirit, which allows it to attached to the cotton or the actual clothing. And also they use it to remove grease from the engines or or or, or even um, nail polish for the ladies or even makeups. They use it. They, they have three types of mineral spirit, type one, two, three. That right. they use different, it's a derivative that they use it in different. Okay. Interesting. I don't think, I think most people don't realize all the different uses and purposes of of what we consider fossil fuels. And we were talking about, you know, everyone says, oh, EV and alternative energy and renewable energy and clean energy. Um, but there's so many byproducts that utilize, um, you know, fossil fuels. And you were just even saying even the paint and everything that's in this room behind me. And, you know, um, just there's, it, it's, it's an ever evolving product line that will come out of this one commodity. Exactly. For instance, if you have a metal 
like anything that has is made of metal if you do not actually use the paint which is completely comes from petrochemical product it would corrode because metal and the water it takes six months to destroy it completely so if you don't use any petrochemical product to um, uh, cover and protect uh, from the water the water would destroy everything including wood metal anything that you can think of it has to be used by protection of petrochemical product and also if you think of electrical electrical um, high voltage if you do not uh, isolate the uh, isolated we will get electric <laughs> by petrochemical product which is plastics and you know the chargers the the in the wall the cables and even the cables high cables that they come from the utility company to the houses and um, all the plastic piping that you use in the bathroom <laughs> everything so i can't think of like i, I it's like that you Millions can't think of, of you can't think of what's not made of it. <laughs> well, That's amazing. We were talking like, a little bit earlier about um, the uh, international team that you have and the countries that you that you um, touch through your business. And we were talking about one person on your team speaks Greek and English. Another person speaks Chinese and English. Another person speaks Spanish and English. And then I think you even said you have someone that speaks Hungarian. So Hungarian. it's so impressive how how much of the world you can touch with a crew of essentially five people. Uh, how did you how did you acquire this team? Um, by um, when 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 you, you get involved with different um, uh, projects, so let's say I, I had a project. I was I was trying to uh, uh, work with the team before the war in Ukraine from Ukraine, and we were gonna buy um, crude oil from West Africa. And the person who I know in Greece, he was part of the um, Zoom call <laughs> and uh, part of the um, conversation. And then we clicked and we started talking to each other and we did a few projects together and we realized it's better to join at this at, at, at the same time and it's the same person from uh china i i did a few projects with her and i realized that she's an expert in uh china and she speaks chinese and she and the chinese buyers are very very much into speaking in chinese and using their own uh, Chinese person because they trust them more and they listen to them more. So if that person vouches and has a credibility to uh, work with our company, so that's the positive and benefit of that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Joint absolutely. venture. Yeah. Yeah, and then you formed strategic partnerships in the same way too, basically, right? With with all right. these different strategic and yeah. utilizing and people across contract. the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So your plans coming up, how soon did you think you were going to be working on the refinery aspect? Uh, right now, we have done all the um, business plan and financial analysis and and the paperwork are done. And actually, we have talked to a few engineering firms The the uh, based of the um, uh, doing a construction is we have to make sure the engineering is perfect. So we can actually go to the next level. So the next level would be the funding for the project and finding a right land and location because it strategically has to be somewhere that you could um, um, uh, use a port to transport the fuel to elsewhere and uh, maybe by the railroad by some somewhere. So we, we are working on that at the, at the moment and the construction is usually take about two years uh, for the mineral spirit, which we call it in US or the white spirit. And also for the urea, it takes about three years because that's a very, very large um, uh, facility which will produce 1 million metric ton per year of fertilizer. Wow, that's a lot. Which comes wow. from natural gas. Mm -hmm. And and the reason we um we decided to use Canada because Canada has a lot of natural gas that they they actually sell it for super cheap because 
you cannot contain natural gas. You either have to export it and sell it, or you have to burn it. So in the government of Canada is willing to work with us and give us subsidiaries and um, so many different way of doing business with them, like um, uh, which is um, beneficial for both of us. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, keep us posted on the uh, refinery. That's a huge undertaking. Are you thinking about doing it down here near the port of uh, Los Angeles? Houston. Houston. Yeah, that's what that's what I figured. Houston, Very interesting. Well, Sean, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate sharing your story and and this amazing company that's fueling uh, the world, <laughs> basically. So, if folks want to get in touch with you, should they find you on uh, LinkedIn? I'll include your. Uh, LinkedIn um, link as well on the description for this podcast. So it's Sean Marassa, it's M-E-R-A-S-S-A. And you can find him on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for your time today, Sean. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.